Hi, it's Rod, and this one's called How to Enjoy Jesus Now. That's what the best thing we can do now is enjoy Jesus now. All we got is our now. There's no such thing as our past anymore. It's gone. There's no such thing as the future yet. It hasn't happened yet. All I got is now with Jesus now. So how do I enjoy Jesus now? Well, you try to believe the truth about Jesus now. And if you believe he's really good and awesome, you'll enjoy him. If you believe Jesus wants to take all your sins away and fill you with joy and peace today, you can be happy with Jesus now. It's like you gotta need a meditation like uh, all I need is Jesus to be happy now. Don't listen to Satan saying you need this, that, the other thing. You can't be happy now. No, all I need is Jesus now. Even if I live in a very evil and suffering world. <laughs> Since Adam and Eve, Satan, demons, wicked people, a few people trying to be Jesus' friend here on earth now. But if you make Jesus happy, he'll make you happy. So that's what Jesus wants to explain to us. Let me take all your sins away. It's like he wants us show us his nail scarred wrist and say this is how much I love you this is how much I want to take all your sins away it's like I was getting a vision of Jesus he's got this beautiful crystal uh, bottle or something it's got blood in it and he's saying this is the most valuable thing in heaven and earth I want to give it to you my blood like the Bible says in John 3, 16, For God so loved the world that he gave his son for you. Jesus said, No greater love than to lay down your life for somebody else. I lay down my life for you, my friends. So we got to believe the truth about Jesus now to enjoy him now. What is some of the truth about Jesus we need to get our mind on? Our mind can be on a thousand things. It's like I have this awesome prayer. <laughs> Jesus put my mind on the most important thing to think about now and wait for an answer from the prayer. Wait for my mind to fill with the most important thing to think about now. It's usually put my mind on Jesus or something to do for Jesus. And then another prayer is, what's best to do now, Jesus? I'm supposed to be choosing to be a friend to Jesus. I'm supposed to be trying to let Jesus live inside my body to do good through it. And when I make Jesus happy, he makes me happy. It says in the Bible, <laughs> in Jesus' presence is a fullness of joy. It says in the Bible, you can have perfect peace trusting in Jesus. Do you see too many people? Do you see anybody experiencing that? The fruit of the Holy Spirit, love, joy, peace. Paul was in a rat-infested prison suffering. Jesus was living in Paul. Jesus said through Paul, Be joyful always. Be joyful always. Not too many people want to read that scripture. It's like Jesus wants to take all our sins away. Every selfish thought is a sin or whatever. And fill us with his Holy Spirit. Jesus said, I want to give you my joy. I want to give you my peace. If, if we believe in it, we can receive it. If we doubt that it's available, we'll miss out on it. I don't make Jesus happy by trying to obey the law myself. I try to make Jesus happy by having faith in him to take all my sins away. I have faith in the blood of Jesus, not my good works. And that pleases him. It says in the Bible, faith pleases God. I trust in Jesus, not me. I trust in Jesus' bank account, not mine. He's got all the Bitcoin, gold, he owns everything. He's like my perfect father, my perfect mother, my perfect husband. 
Whatever I need, Jesus can give it to me whenever I need it. Jesus can always give me ten times more than I need. If I need to see a miracle, Jesus can do a miracle. You have to learn this truth from Jesus and meditate on this truth from Jesus and then try to let him teach this truth out through you to others. You try to have a good friendship relationship with Jesus like Abraham had with God. Or Noah had with God or something. And then try to encourage other people to do likewise. Jesus wants to be your friend. Jesus wants to live inside of you. It's just not my body, it's our body. Me and Jesus' body. This isn't just my place to live. This is where me and Jesus live. I'm not alone. Jesus is always with me. By faith. He takes all my sins away and he fills me with joy and peace. He tells me to tell others, hey, let Jesus take your sins away and fill you with joy and peace too. Be a friend to Jesus like I'm trying to be a friend to Jesus. It's always a choice. People are choosing. Do I want to be a friend of Jesus or an enemy of Jesus? There's only two choices. Do I want to be a demon follower or a Jesus follower? There's only two choices. Well, think of it like a courtroom analogy or something. I'm guilty of sin. I deserve the prison of hell forever, which is like Gitmo forever. Jesus is sitting in the courtroom or something. They went with me being sentenced or something. Guilty. Rod is guilty of hell. Jesus stands up. I'll go to hell for Rod. Let me go to hell. Let me be punished for Rod. Rod says, yes, Jesus, do it. I get to go free from the courtroom. Jesus goes to hell for me. Jesus takes the punishment for me. The Lamb of God that takes all Rod's sins away. Makes me as righteous as he is as a gift. The blood takes all my sins away. I still sin, but they're covered in the blood of Jesus. And I try to not sin. When you let Jesus live through you, you don't sin. If you let Satan or your flesh live through you, you do sin. One selfish thought's a sin. You just gotta say, Jesus, help me to do the loving right thing. And when I do wrong things, forgive me for it. And, uh... Make me righteous by your blood, not my good works. I get into heaven because I believe Jesus' blood takes all my sins away, not because I think I obeyed all the laws myself. All glory to Jesus. Jesus loves our praise, our worship, taking communion, thanking him for the precious blood. How valuable am I? Jesus' most precious blood. God gave his son so he could be close to me forever. That's quite a valuable gift. There's nothing more valuable. So, like Jesus said, only a few people choose to be his friends. He made us. He gave us a free will choice like Adam and Eve. He says, choose to be my friend like Abraham. Most people don't. Jesus said a few enter the eternal life. Most go down the broad road of destruction with Satan to hell. Most choose Satan as their friend, not Jesus as their friend. And they suffer for it. If you want to choose to be Jesus' friend, if you want to let him live in your body like Paul said, it's no longer I live, it's Jesus who lives in me. If you want to say, Jesus, what's best to do now? Get answers back and start to do it. Jesus will give you the power to do whatever he asks you to do. You can make Jesus happy. When you make Jesus happy, he'll make you happy spiritually. I like what you're doing. Have some peace of joy. <laughs> Trying to learn truth, meditate on truth, read the Bible, learn truth from Jesus teaching you truth as you read it. Try to let Jesus teach it to others through you. <laughs> Jesus trying to teach truth through you, if you let him. Jesus the truth teacher in you. It's like sometimes you think, what if they take the Bible away from me and all that stuff? Well, it's like John on an island. Like, none of them had Bibles or New Testament Bibles in the New Testament. It was all coming from Jesus, the truth in their mind to share with others. Sometimes I can write a book almost just with Jesus speaking to me or something. I'm not concerned about that. If I need Jesus to fill my mind with truth every moment, he can do it. Like 
John's revelation on the island of Patmos, or Paul writing the New Testament letters to the rat infested prison. Jesus wants to speak prophetically through us visions, dreams, voice in our mind. We need to believe Jesus is always with us, even in a evil and suffering world. Jesus is with me in the hell hole. It's like I look at the evil world around me and I gotta feel like Jesus is holding my hand saying, don't let it bother you, Rod. I control it. I can work it out for your good. I can make you happy in it. I can help you not be bothered by it. You gotta keep putting your mind on awesome good Jesus and balancing it out on all this evil human beings, free will choice and Satan and demons and everything. Satan's hell whole world. It's like Jesus says to me, I'm in the hell hole with you, Ron. I'm holding your hand. It's like I got a motto, like uh, I got to live in an evil and suffering world. But Jesus can help me through it, bring good out of it for me, make me happy in it, and help me not to be bothered by it. Can you understand that the supernatural peace of joy it doesn't come from owning things or selfish physical pleasures or something. It comes from making Jesus happy. It's like Jesus was saying to me about my prayer time or something. How much he loved it. It's like I'm thinking, oh, this is a waste of time, rattling on about help this person, help that person or something. So Jesus kind of walked me through how much he likes my prayer time. And I said, wow, it's that important to you, Jesus. Oh, I love doing it then. It's like I go through this prayer time of worshiping Jesus. You're the greatest, Lord. Thanks for all of your millions of gifts or whatever. And he loves to hear that. You're the greatest, Lord. And then he loves me to pray for other people, to ask him to try to help other people in a loving way. It delights his heart. It's like if I wasn't praying for them, they might be dead by now, or they may never get saved or something. I don't know what the answers to my prayers will be until after I get to heaven. But if Jesus says pray, I pray, even though I don't see great results from the prayers yet. And then as I choose to obey Jesus to pray for others, he prompts other people to pray for me. So if I didn't pray for others, I wouldn't get others praying for me or something. There's great blessing in it for me. Jesus likes it. It helps other people out. I'll find out how well it helps people out after I die and get great suffering love awards for choosing to pray for people even though I didn't feel like it or think it was that important or something. But if Jesus tells you to do it, you should seek to do it even if you suffer doing it. It's like suffering can be good for us. Suffering love can get the greatest rewards in heaven. Heaven will be a thousand times better than this suffering earth experience is. It's like suffering in our life can bring us closer to Jesus, which is good for us. He can work it out for good. All through the Bible, people suffered, and that helped them to say, Help me, Jesus, or help me, God, to get through it. And when Jesus has to punish the wicked, he can work it out for good. He's, he's trying to save a few people through difficult judgments on them or something. If he doesn't bring suffering into their life, they just, like a rich man, go to hell or something. He's trying to wake them up, like hit them with a sledgehammer. With suffering, so that they might get closer to him, which could be good for them, so they don't have to go to hell forever when they die. But that's what we see today. Jesus has to punish the wicked, but he can help the righteous out, like Noah on the ark safe and the rest of the people drowning. Me safe and the rest of the people getting punished or are we? And there's nothing too difficult for Jesus to do. Living in me. I just say, Jesus, what do you want to do? He tells me. I, I try to let him use my body to do it. He gets happy, makes me happy for doing it. When you make Jesus happy, he makes you happy spiritually. My job is just to be his friend and say, what do you want to do through my body now, Jesus? Make a truth teaching like this? Let's do it. Uh, pray for somebody? Let's do it. That type of thing. Jesus has he has a good plan for being wicked land. And uh, like Jesus said to the Romans, well, you could have no power over me unless God gave it to you. Jesus controls it all.
nobody can touch me uh, nothing shall harm me unless Jesus allows it the suffering can be good for me help me to get closer to Jesus get some suffering level words in heaven for obeying Jesus through suffering spiritual peace spiritual joy even though you have back pain or other problems in life persecution or something like Paul in the rat fest in prison be joyful always so Jesus wants to teach us truth he wants us to meditate on truth we have to ask him put my mind in the most important things to think about because I can't do it myself Satan's trying to get me to think about all million other things unimportant things balance it out don't just look at all the evil people and Satan's kingdom on the earth and stuff like that and be depressed about it look at awesome Jesus hold your hand say be filled with joy and peace next to you I got a good plan for you and look man Rod I want to use your body to do things through. Pray for people through. Try to teach people truth through. It's not just my body, it's our body, me and Jesus's, if I let him use it. But he's not going to force anybody. If I don't want to be his friend, I, I'm his enemy. If I don't want to let him do good things through my body, Satan does evil things. It's a choice. Believing the truth of Jesus can help you to enjoy him now. Jesus can always give me 10 times more than I need. I'm trusting in Jesus' bank account, not mine. I'm like a super man with super God Jesus living inside of me. Me and Jesus always win. I'm in the spiritual war, but I can always win it with Jesus. Ask Jesus for help. It's like a vision I see of like a wicked government taking children away from their parents or something, and Jesus just standing by and watching. And I, I look at Jesus, and he says to me, I can't help them. They don't want my help. And that's what it is. Unless you believe in Jesus and you ask for his help, you don't get it. And this is a very evil and dangerous world which can destroy you if you don't have Jesus helping you through it. So i got to live in an evil and suffering world, but Jesus can help me through it. Jesus could drop my enemies dead turned them to dust at my feet any time. He controls everything. He made everything. He controls Satan. He controls governments. He controls everything. <laughs> my heartbeat. He made this eyeball. And he's awesome. So if we would choose to believe the truth about how awesome Jesus is with us, even though we're in an evil and suffering world like Noah was or whatever, it doesn't have to bother us. Jesus tried to say through Paul, be joyful always. Jesus tried to say, you can have perfect peace, trust in me. It's a choice. Be Jesus' friend, do his will, go to heaven, get great rewards, live in a perfect world with no Satan and demons and wicked people after you die. All because Jesus died on the cross to take your sins away. Or choose not to and say, I don't want to believe in Jesus, I don't want to get saved and they go to hell with Satan. They want to follow Satan, they go to hell with Satan. They want to follow Jesus, they can go to heaven with Jesus. So that's a bit of both. How to enjoy Jesus now.